You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, March 5th, 2021. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. The Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films announced the nominees for the 46th Annual Saturn Awards on Thursday. Birds of Prey, Tenon, and multiple Star Wars and Star Trek properties earned nominations, while award favorites Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and The Five Bloods also got recognition. The Academy extended the eligibility period to 16 months due to COVID-19 pandemic, similar to the Oscars 2020 eligibility rules. The 46th Saturn Award covers nominees uh, released between July 15, 2019 and November 15, 2020. Nominees in multiple categories include Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian Clone Wars, uh, animated series, Tenant, Dr. Sleep, Knives Out, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Birds of Prey, Mulan, Better Call Saul, Outlander, The Walking Dead, Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Picard, uh, Lovecraft Country, and Watchmen. The award, the Academy also nominated the Five Bloods in the Best Thriller category along with Delroy Linda. Birds of Prey earned a Best Comic to Motion Picture Animation uh, nomination along with acting nods from Margot Robbie and Jeanette Smollett. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood qualified for a Best Fantasy Film nomination due to writer-director Quentin Tarantino's alternative history of the Manson murders. Julia Butters also earned a Best Performance by a Younger Actor nomination for a role as Leonardo DiCaprio's co-star in a Western. Tarantino also earned a Directing and Screenplay nomination. The complete list of nominees is special is posted on the Saturn Awards website. Special honorees are still to be announced. The Academy has not announced a date for the 2021 ceremony yet. The Woman in the Window, a new film starring Amy Adams, is coming to Netflix in May. The streaming service shared a premiere date May 14th and a short teaser for the movie Thursday. In the teaser, Adams is seen turning a camera around to face outside. She then peers behind the lens. The Woman in the Window is based on the novel of the same name by A.J. Finn, the pen name of Daniel Mallory. The story centers on Dr. Anna Fox, an agrophobic psychologist, who suspects foul play when her neighbor disappears. The new film is directed by Tracy Letts and directed by John Wright. Gary Oldman, Anthony Mackey, Jennifer Jason League, and Julianne Moore co-stars. Wright said in an interview with Entertainment Weekly that he was interested in how the story explores perceives reality versus truth. He says, I'm also interested in always having been in the blurring between the subjective and objective reality, truth and lies, and the lies that we tell ourselves and how we create our own reality. Rio McIntyre has signed a two with Lifetime. The network said in a press release that McIntyre, of 65, will star in and produce in the holiday movie Christmas in Tune and another project. Christmas in Tune will be a ten-pole movie for Lifetime Annual. It's a wonderful Lifetime holiday slate. Uh, casting is underway for the new film, which will be filmed in the spring. In Christmas Time in Tune, uh, McIntyre plays Belle, a marketing executive who is worried she may lose her job. She decides to reunite a singing duo for a charity concert, but the singers are her parents, who haven't spoken to her, uh, to to uh, who haven't spoken to each other in years. McIntyre will record an original holiday song for the film. Uh, Lifetime EVP of movies, limited series, and Original movie acquisition, Tanya Lopez, said, in, uh, said now, McIntyre, McIntyre previously starred in the sitcom Reba, which aired in syndication on Lifetime. She said, I am thrilled to partner with Lifetime for a reunion and a return to television movies. My fans and I enjoy their programming and look forward to watching the Reba show there for many years. Reba's second project is in development in 2022. Vanessa Hutchins has wrapped filming on the new movie The Princess Switch 3. The, four, the 32 year old singer and actress shared a photo Wednesday from her final day on set at the Netflix film. The black and white picture shows Hutchins 
striking a pose outside. The caption, Hutchins had said the crew and cast were able to complete the shoot safely. She wrote, and that's a wrap on, on Princess Switch 3. What a whirlwind. Man, everyone's worked their ass off and stay safe. Big thanks to at Netflix for taking the extra precautions to keep us on track and bring that new new to your screen. And now, IZTFO. Hutchins was uh, filming The Princess Switch 3 in Scotland. The Princess Switch is a sequel to The Princess Switch in 2018 and The Princess Switch 2, Switch Again in 2020. Uh, Hutchins played the dual role of, of Stacey DeNovo, an American baker, and Laura Margaret Delacourt, a fictional royal. Uh, Hutchins also portrayed a third Fiona Fembo broke in The Princess Switch 2, Switch Again, which premiered on the Nef on Netflix in November. Later, earlier Wednesday, Hutchins High School musical co-star Ashley Tisdale shared a photo of her recent reunion with Hutchins. Hutchins and Tisdale, who is pregnant with her first child, um, Hutchins, uh, who is pregnant, uh, uh, Tisdale was pregnant with her first child, played. Gabriella Montez and Sharpe Evans in the Disney Channel film series. Tisdale says it's taken nine months, but safely we got a picture before my girl left again. Love you at Vanessa Hutchins. Hutchins will also star in Tick, Tick, Boom, a new film based on the Jonathan Larson musical directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Universal Studios announced the new release dates for Fast and the Furious sequel F9 and Minions The Rise of Gru on the film's social media accounts Thursday. F9 is now scheduled for June 25th, while Minions is delayed until July 1st, 2022. F9 was uh, previously scheduled for release Memorial Day weekend 2020. After COVID-19 lockdowns began last year in March, Universal moved uh, to ANS, uh, moved F9 to April 2nd, 2021. When the James Bond film No Time to Die moves from November 20th to April 2nd, 2021, F9 moves again to Memorial Day weekend. No Time to Die eventually moved again to April 8th. Yeah. Minions, the rise of Gru previously was scheduled for July of this year. The Despicable Me prequel shows Gru's, uh, played by Steve Carell's, rise to villainy along with his fellow million. And F9 Vin Diesel faces off against John Cena, Justin League, um, the director of The Fast and the Furious, and and, um, and it comes in three parts, uh, th uh, three through six. Uh, Justin Lin directed Fast and Furious parts three through six, and is returning and is set to direct the two-part series finale, films ten and eleven. Theaters in California are gradually reopening on a tiered system. With New York movie theaters reopening this month, Warner Brothers is releasing new movies in theaters on HBO Max and simultaneously this year. While Disney is booking Raya and The Last Dragon in the theaters, but offering it to Disney Plus subscribers for a $30 subcharge. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new series, The Serpent. The streaming service shared a trailer for the crime drama to Thursday. The Serpent centers on the crimes of French con man and serial killer Charles Subaraj, who murdered young tourists in Southeast Asia during the 1970s. Tahar Rahim plays Subaraj in the series. The Serpent is written by Richard Warlow and Toby Finlay and directed by Tom Shanklin and Hans Herbots. Jenna Coleman co-stars as Silveraj's follower and romantic partner Marie Andre Leclerc. The series is also um, the the series also features um, Billy Hallam, Ellie Bamber, Matilda Warner, and Tim McKearney. The Serpent originally premiered on BBC One in January. The series will be released April second on Netflix. Raham is best known for the films of Prophet and the Mediterranean. 
Coleman played uh, Clara Oswood on Doctor Who and Queen Victoria in the movie Queen. Stars announced on Thursday that a limited series revival of Party Down is in development. The team behind the original Party Down included Paul Rudd, Rob Thomas, John M. Baum, and Daniel Etheridge, uh, arriving, uh, returning to executive produce. M. Baum will also serve as a showrunner. No casting announcements have been made. The, uh, the limited series is produced for stars by Lionsgate Television. Adam Scott, Kim Marino, Jane Lynch, Mar Martin Starr, Ryan Halsen, Lizzie Kaplan, and Megan Mullaney uh, starred in the original Party Down, which aired on Stars 2009 to 2010. Uh, the half-hour comedy follows a, a, uh, follows a Los Angeles catering team who are hoping to catch their big break in Hollywood. Thomas said in a statement at the end of 2019, the Party Down cast and producers were all reunited at a re retrospective for the show hosted by Vulture. Uh, we had such a good time that we wanted to find a way to get them back together. Uh, the cast is so busy these days that finding a, a window where they they can do it, they can do a, uh, may, um, may require trigonometry, but we determined it to make it happen. HBO Max released a trailer for their upcoming series, Made for Love Thursday. The trailer is scored by star Ray Morano uh, singing Beyonce's Crazy in Love. Uh, Christian Milotti stars as Hazel, a woman who moves back in with her father, Romano, and his robot, Diane. Hazel claims that her ex, Byron, played by Billy Mugginson, uh, planted a surveilling chip in her shoulder. Uh, Byron is a tech billionaire who believes his Made for Love uh, can provide him with enough emotional uh, da data to make the two of them a single or living God. The trailer also shows Hazel crawling out of a uh, underground bunker while Byron pushes uh, pursues her. The sci-fi comedy also stars Dan uh, Bakedale, uh, Noma Duenzi, and Augusto Aguilera. Caleb Foote, Kim Whitley, Natasha Hattendi, and Patty Harrison and additional guest stars including Iron Sky, John Daly, uh, Matty Carter Pro, Mel Rodriguez, and Serranos Jackson will guest star. Christina Lee is sh the showrunner along with executive producers Elisa Nutting, Pat Somero, uh, Dean Bekitopoulos, uh, Lisa Chesson, and S.J. Clarkson. Uh, Matati recently starred in two episodes of Amazon's anthology series Modern Love. Uh, she starred in the final season of How I Met Your Mother as the future mother and one season of Fargo. Made for Love is Romano's fifth season after Everybody Loves Raymond. He, has follow he followed his long-running sitcom with men of a certain age, Parenthood, Vinyl, and Get Shorty. Mugginson also appeared in Get Shorty, the Netflix sci-fi show Maniac, and the CBS All Access Fairy Tale series, Tell Me a Story. Made for Love uh, premieres April on HBO Max. Chris Harrison plans to return to The Bachelor after stepping away from the franchise in February. The 49-year-old television personality appeared on Thursday's episode of Good Morning America, where he discussed his controversial interview with Rachel Lindsay and his future with The Bachelor. Harrison stepped aside from The Bachelor last month after speaking in a way that perpetuates racism in an interview with Lindsay on Extra. In the interview, Harrison defended Bachelor Season 25 contestant Rachel Kirkconnell, later apologized for offensive and racist past actions. On GMA, Harrison said he was wrong to defend Kirkconnell, whose social media history included photos of her attending an Old South plantation theme. And nine, uh, in 2018, and liking voice, uh, racist postings. Uh, Harrison said, I'm an imperfect man. I made a mistake and I own it. I believe that mistakes doesn't reflect who I am and what I stand for. I'm committed to progress, not just, um, not just only for myself, but for also for the franchise. And this is a franchise that has been part of my life for the better part of 20 years. Uh, Harrison had a question 
in his interview with Lindsay if the antebellum party was a good look in 2018, or is it not a good look in 2021? Uh, GMA Harrison walked back his comments and denounced such events. The star says, I'm sad and shocked at how insensitive I was in that interview with Rachel Lindsay. He added, I didn't say it then, and I want to say it now. Um, I'm... Uh, and I didn't speak from my heart, and that is to say that I stand against all forms of racism. And I'm deeply sorry to Rachel Lindsay and the black community. Harrison says he's spoken to, quote, leaders, scholars, teachers, faith leaders, and a race educator and, and uh, strategists during stepping away from the bachelor. He ultimately plans to return to the franchise. Uh, Harrison says, I plan to be back and I want to be back. And I think this franchise can be an important beacon of our life. And we are excited to, and willing to work with the work that the show has progressed. Bachelor executive producers voiced their support for Lindsay in a statement Monday after Lindsay deleted her Instagram account after experiencing hate and online bullying following her interview with Harrison. The Bachelor is in its 25th season on ABC. The season stars Matt James, the first black Bachelor to appear on the show. Nickelodeon announced on Thursday a new spin a new spin-off from SpongeBob SquarePants focusing on a younger Patrick titled The Patrick Star Show. Patrick and his family star in the animated family sitcom which will air on Nickelodeon this summer. The network has ordered 13 episodes. The Patrick Star Show uh, will follow young Patrick as he hosts his own television show for his uh, neighborhood. Patrick's sister, Scardina, parents Bunny and Cecil, and Grandpa Grandpat will also be featured. Bill um, Fagerbake will be returning to voice Patrick with Tom Wilson as Cecil, Chris Summer as Bunny, uh, Jill Talley as Scardina, and Dana Snyder as Grandpa. Uh, Grandpa. Sp SpongeBob SquarePants voice stars Tom Kenny, who does the voice of SpongeBob. Robert Bumpass does the voice of Squidward. Carol Lawrence, who does the voice of Sandy Cheeks. Clancy Brown as Mr. Krabs. And Mr. Lawrence as Plankett will also be making appearances. Uh, Mark um, Sorelli, Vincent Walker, and Jenna Monica are, are singing. Are. are are producing. The series is being developed for the television uh, by Claudia Spinelli, the SVP of AMA Development at Nickelodeon, with production overseen by Kelly Gardner, Vice President, Current Series Animation at the Network. The Patrick Star uh, Show is the second SpongeBob SquarePants spinoff following Camp Kroll, SpongeBob's, SpongeBob's, uh, Sp uh, SpongeBob's SquarePants spinoff, followed by Camp Coral, SpongeBob's Under Years, which follows a younger SpongeBob and his friends, and uh, at a summer camp together. Uh, camp Coral is available on Paramount Plus as the streaming service launches on Thursday, a long new film, SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. Uh, Ramsey Miata, the president of Nickelodeon Animation, said in a statement, uh, Nickelodeon is diving deeper into a bikini bottom to give fans a look at our lovable adult Patrick Starr and his entire family with a sitcom only he can imagine uh, up. The second original spinoff allows us to expand our reach, tell new stories, and connect with audiences around the world who continue to love these characters. Elizabeth Olsen and Jimmy Fallon took a mind-bending trip down memory lane by performing WandaVision parody Fallon Vision on The Tonight Show. The skit started with the black and white version of The Tonight Show on Wednesday as uh, Fallon conducted an old school in interview with Olsen. Olsen and Fallon continued to travel through time presenting different versions of The Tonight Show through the decades. The duo donned different outfits and hairstyles during, for each period. Olsen began to question what is happening and whether Fallon is causing this due to wanting things to feel more normal than uh, before the coronavirus pandemic. 
WandaVision star Catherine Hahn is later revealed to be behind the time bending and call a callback to her role on the show as the villainous Agatha Harkness. Uh, Fallon and Olsen then have a traditional modern day interview where the actress reacts to memes inspired by WandaVision and discuss starring in Marvel's upcoming Doctor Strange sequel and how it connects to WandaVision. Uh, Olsen says it is complete tee off for my character. Drake will release a sequel to his uh, Scary Hours EP. The 34-year-old rapper confirmed Wednesday on Instagram that he will release a follow-up to the 2018 EP on Friday. Uh, Drake shared a Blue Hub cover art for the project featuring the word Scary Hours in glittery letters uh, and two diamonds. He will release the new music at midnight. Drake captioned the post Friday morning. The original Scary Hours was released in January 2018 and included the singles God's Plan and Diplomatic Immunity. Drake was reported sp uh, spotted filming a new music video in his hometown of Toronto this week. In January, Drake delayed this, uh, the release of his sixth studio album, Certified Lover Boy, after having knee surgery. The rapper says, I was planning to release my album this month, but between surgery and rehab, my energy has been dedicated to recovery. I've been blessed to be back on my feet, feeling great and focusing on the album, but C CLB won't be dropping in January. Looking forward to sharing it with you all in 2021. Certified Lower Boy will feature the singles Laugh Now, Cry Later, featuring Lil Durk, which was released in August. The album is Drake's first since Scorpion, which was released in June 2018. The Foo Fighters took the stage on the Late Late Show with James Corden. The rock band performed and shared favorite party lists during Wednesday's episode of the CBS Late Night Show. The Foo Fighters released their uh, 10th studio album, Medicine at Midnight, in February. The group had referred to the album as its party album and suggested other party playlists on the Late Late Show. Taylor Hawkins says, just yacht rock all the time. Uh, Rami Jaffe added, I would probably put on some Saturday Night Fever or some, or some disco. Chris Shiflett recalled how when he first joined the band, they would play Juvenile before every show. Passenger confirmed his love for Butterfly and named Butterfly as his favorite uh, Carrie album. He said, I learned to drive to Butterfly. I had a Butterfly cassette. It's all I played, and that's how I learned to drive. Dave Grohl called Medicine at Midnight the band's Saturday Night Party album in an interview with NPR in February. He says, when producer uh, Greg Christian and I got together to make this record, the intention was pretty clear. It was like, let's make some rhythms and some grooves that people are going to bounce around to. On the Late Late Show, the Foo Fighters performed the song Waiting on a War. The group shared an evocative music video for this track in January after Grohl sang the song, said the song was inspired by his 11-year-old daughter, Harper. Metallica took to the stage on The Late Show with Stephen Corbert. The heavy metal band performed during Wednesday's episode of the CBS Late Night Show to celebrate the 35th anniversary of its album, Masters of Puppets. Metallica performed its song, Battery, in front of the original backdrop of its Damage, Inc. tour. The group wrote on Instagram, Thank you again to at Stephen at home and at the Corbert Late Show for letting us fire a battery to celebrate 35 years of Masters of Puppets. Metallica also celebrated the anniversary by sharing uh, the album's cover art on Instagram. The caption reads, on this date in 1986, Masters of Puppet was released. Hard to believe it's been 35 years. Metallica released its uh, 10th studio album, uh, Hardwire to Self-Destruct, in 2016. The band released a new live album, s 2, with the San Francisco Symphony in August. Uh, Wednesday's Late Show marks Metallica's second performance on the show this year. The group performed Enter Sandman on the show February 7th following Super Bowl 55. 
Selena Gomez and DJ Snake released on Thursday a new uh, bilingual dance track titled Selfish Love. The song is uh, available to stream on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Pandora, Deezer, and YouTube. Gomez switched between English and Spanish on the song, which also features a saxophone. Selfish Love will appear on Gomez's upcoming new EP, Revelación, her first uh, Spanish language release, as arriving on March 12th. Revelación also includes the songs De Una Vez and Va Conmigo. And finally, here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of March 6th. Number 10, Dulipa with Levitating. Number 9, Ariana Grande with Positions. Number uh, 8, Lil Tage with Call My, Calling My Name. Number 7, 24 Golden with Mood. Number 6, Save Your Time, or uh, rather Save Your Tears the, by The Weeknd. Number 5, The Weeknd with Blinding Lights. Number 4, 34 plus 35, Ariana Grande. Number 3, Chris Brown with Go Crazy. Number 2, Cardi B with Up. And the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of March 6th is Olivia Rodrigo with Driver's License. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, March 5th, 2021. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Entertainment Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for The Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night and God bless you all.